All right, so we're gonna have uh, Dr. Harvey come on up. Uh, Dr. Harvey, Robert Harvey, received his doctorate of medicine in 1974 from Baylor College of uh, Medicine in Houston, Texas. He completed his internship and residency in internal medicine at Wilford Hall um, in 1977 and then uh, completed his Allergy and Immunology Fellowship in 1979 at Wilford Hall. Uh, he's the only physician in Victoria and the surrounding areas who is a board, board certified in both internal medicine and allergy, asthma, and immunology. So welcome to the stage, Dr. Harvey. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, it's a tough spot to be in the last lecture of the day after everybody's had cheesecake or you know, on carrot cake, so I have, I'm about to go to sleep. I have no financial disclosure or conflicts of interest. What we're gonna cover today is we're gonna cover the definition of cytokines and interleukins, interleukin families, interleukins associated with atopic inflammation, and available in upcoming cytotoxics, cyto anti-cytokine agents for atopic inflammation, and there's another slide we're just going to review our <coughs> Lori Garcia's guidelines for uh, documentation for getting our drugs approved when we prescribe them. Um, cytokines, a, diver a diverse group of small proteins that are secreted by cells for the purpose of intercellular signaling and communication. We have a list of the major types of cytokines. <coughs> I'll just go through the type on the left and you can speed read what they are on the right in the interest of time. Uh, we have interferons, we have interleukins, which are the major topic of this talk, chemokines, colony stimulating factors, and tumor necrosis factors. We'll talk a little bit about the history of interleukins. They were first discovered in 1977 with IL-1. Um, it was initial, the term interleukin was coined with a mistaken idea that these molecules only trafficked between leukocytes, which is not necessarily so, and we'll give you some examples. And the last line there is based on an article from 2012, so until 2012, over 360,000 articles had been, uh, had referred to interleukins. So we have about 12 minutes to cover a lot of information, and so we're off. The functional roles of interleukins in atopic disease are the production of allergen-specific IgE, eosinophilia, and production of mucus. They also uh, <coughs> guide tissue migration of Th2 cells and eosinophils. They have uh, uh, activities and regulation of tight junctions, and with that, they have uh, uh, influence on epithelial barrier integrity. So let's look at the cells that are generated by, the, uh, inter, uh, that generate interleukins. So remember, the, the initial definition was um, trafficking between leukocytes, and uh, that implies that they are generated by leukocytes, but these are some of the cells that, man that uh, generate interleukins. So gamma delta cells, <coughs> where's the, there it is. These are cells that actually have, uh, they live at the margin between innate and adaptive immunity. And the neocytes, they have to do with innate immunity alone. They're important in the generation of Th2 responses. We have more cells that generate interleukins. <coughs> and it just goes on and on. So basically what you can do is you can look at any cell you want to pick in the body and they may very well be generating interleukins. Let's look at the interleukin families. <coughs> so we have uh, what I've got 
is on the left of the grid, the family and then representative interleukins that are produced in that family. You'll notice that the cytokines of the type two response basically pretty much have their own family. Oops. <clears throat> Some of these are members of other families, but there are, there are cytokines of a type two response that don't, do not belong to other interleukin families. Oh, by the way, this lecture will be available online for you all to all download. Now, no talk on interleukins is complete without a slide like this. So that's, that's that slide. <laughs> We're now gonna look at anti-cytokinations for Th2-associated diseases. And <clears throat> the right side of the table is the target, and the left side are the drugs that have been developed to uh, antagonize those targets. So you'll see for IL-4, RA is mostly dupilumab. For IL-5R, we have benralizumab, nepalizumab. IL-5, we have reslizumab. Uh, IL-6R receptor, which is basically involved in giant cell arteritis. And RA, we have tocilizumab. For IL-13s, we have lebrotizumab, RCP4046, also known as sendokimab trilokinumab, nemalizumab is for IL-31R a receptor, and for IL-3 we have atepikimab, elikimab, and lastly we have for TSLP, thymic stromal lymphopoietin, we have tezalapalimumab, tongue twisters. What's that? If a woodchuck could chuck wood, how many? <laughs> Okay, so now we have current and potential anti-cytokine therapies for Th2 mediated disease. I've divided them into disease types. So we have for asthma, FDA approved, venralizumab, dupilumab, nepalizumab, tezapalumab, reslizumab, drugs under study, tocilizumab, itepicumab, blah, blah, blah. Atopic dermatitis, we've heard a lot about these medicines already. Uh, in atopic dermatitis, we have some emerging therapies, we have nemalizumab, lebrotizumab, and etokimab. So if you go back, if you actually download this lecture, you go back two slides before and you can see where all the individual uh, drugs are on the list. Just go. Well, <clears throat> there we have the drugs, and then we have the diseases here. Uh, eosinophilic esophagitis, FDA approved. We have dupilumab. We heard a lot about that a, moment, a few moments ago. Uh, FDA organ, orphan drug designation we have for EOE is venralizumab and tezapalumab. We have an emerging drug, RPC4046, sendokimab For eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangi polyangiitis, we have approved mepalizumab. Hyper-eosinophilic hyper syndrome, we have mepalizumab available, and uh, venralizumab is being studied. Uh, this is per AstraZeneca communication that I had. Chronic sinusitis with nasal polyps, FDA approved as dupilumab, emerging therapies. This is according to Hippocrates. How many people use Hippocrates? Fabulous, fabulous. So according to Hippocrates, uh, chronic, rhinus, chronic sinusitis with nasal polyps, they're looking at venralizumab, mepalizumab, and tezapalumab. This actually may be out of date. And then most important, the last drug, which how many people have seen pyrigonodularis? We've seen it. It's really difficult to take care of. <clears throat> so um, FDA has recently approved dupilumab for that. I might say about PN, though, is that I've had luck with ketotifen in one case of, of uh, biopsy-proven PN.
And as promised, this is our <coughs> biologic manners uh, checklist for documentation required for prescribing medicines for atopic dermatitis, chronic urticaria, asthma, and nasal polyps. So we covered definition of cytokines and interleukins, interleukin families. We, we uh, went through a list of interleukins associated with atopic inflammation, and we talked about available and upcoming inter anti-interleukin agents for atopic inflammation, and we talked about documentation requirements for prescribing the drug. Thank you. Uh, I w at the end of the article is, <coughs> Uh, my bibliography and uh, the uh, one, one of my favorite articles out of this entire bibliography is Tisnacinic into the eye of a cytokine storm. So um, we've seen cytokine storms with COVID, and we've also seen cytokine storms as a therapeutic misadventure treating cancers. I think it was lymphoma. That was when it was first described, the cytokine storm. So that's a great article to read if you're interested. Any questions? Thank you very much. Guys, so we are um, releasing you back into the wild. So enjoy your afternoon. Uh, we will be sending out an email tomorrow.